welcome to Breakthrough Church. Thank you all for joining us for our Sunday service. If you are new or if this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so ready to have a great time in the Lord. So if you are ready to have a great time in the Lord, make some noise for Jesus. Amen. Mm, I don't know. You don't really sound ready. Come on, make some noise for Let's Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us for our Sunday service. It is such a blessing to see you all here. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure you are following our prophet on all social media platforms to stay up to date. And be sure to come join us for our service. We have our Friday night prophetic service at 7.30 p.m., and we also have our Sunday services at 1.30 p.m. Yes, please be sure to come join us for our services, whether it's online or in person. Now, if it's online, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified each time that we go live and each time that we upload. And if it's right here in person, the address is 3065 Bayer Boulevard, Building 102, right here in San Diego, California. So we hope to see you here. Now, Breakthrough Church has merch that you can go and check out on our website at juniorbennettministries.com. So go ahead and shop all the merch before it's all sold out. Yes, make sure you're checking our website because we have some really nice pieces that you guys do not want to miss out on. Now, before service begins, we do ask you all to please make sure your phones are on silent and we'll join you inside for praise and worship. Bye. Bye.
is wonderful there's change that happens when we're in his presence when he speaks to us when he gives us a word there's nothing that can compare to his glory nothing compares to what God has in store for your life so we lift our hands and worship and we welcome him in God we make room for you we welcome you in Holy Spirit hallelujah thank you Jesus somebody tell him how much you love
lifting our hands. Come on, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. Oh, here's it.
Somebody open up your mouth and give the Lord thanks and praise to Him. I think that was good for the pastor, but it ain't good for God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout to God today.
touch your neighbor and say, God's goodness keeps running after me. And not only is it running after me, but it, it is upon me. His goodness is upon me. His goodness is upon my life. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. I give the worshipers a round of applause. Give them. We give God thanks for them. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Uh, before you sit, you know, this weekend was a, a, a powerful weekend of prayer. And while I was in prayer, the Lord was showing me some things. And I, while I'm looking at, I'm looking at these things, I kept saying to the Lord, your goodness, your grace, your love, your mercy is just immense. It's a lot. It's so a lot that it will actually cause you to wonder, why me? Your love is just so great. And when you read the book of Romans, you get to understand that the words say, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not heights, nor deaths, not even angels, nor principalities. Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. But one of the things I've realized, especially today, is that our focus has been on everything else except the love of God. And the thing about it is one thing I tell people all the time, you can play anybody, but you can never play God. And the thing about it is what I want to tell you is it's not about the pleasing of your flesh. It's about pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ. See, as long as he's pleased, you should be at peace. And this is why it's very important that as you learn to walk with the Lord and as you're walking with him, you get to understand that the main goal is to please him. The moment that you please him is the moment that you see everything in your life start to align itself. And the truth of the matter that when we speak about alignment, we're speaking about, uh, 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 how would I say this, uh, a ruffle of the feathers. And I say that because in that time, you'll get to understand that whatever God wants to do in your life, he does it in a way where sometimes will rub you wrong. But it is his will, and his will is his command. So you have to understand that whenever God is about to do something great in your life, there's a shift that takes place. And that shift that takes place, you need not to worry about the fact that it's unrecognizable to your natural mortal eyes, but understandable with the mind of Christ. Where you're saying to yourself, Father, I don't get you what you're doing and why you're doing it. But because I know who you are and I stand firm on who you are, I yield to you. Whatever you want to do, do it, Father. Father, have your own way. If you're shifting things in my life, if you're rearranging things in my life, if you're moving me from one place to the next, Father, have your own way. One thing I always tell the Lord and I ask of him, I say, Father... I recognize that this world has so much to offer. I recognize that I will go through things, but give me your strength. Because the words say he will never give you much more than you can bear. Can I be honest with you? Everything you're going through right now, God already knows that you will come out of it. Yes. He knows you'll come out of it. And the reason why he knows you're going to come out of it because he's the one that put you in it. He knows everything. Can I be honest with you? Even when he didn't put you in it, you put yourself in it. And even then he said, ah, have you learned your lesson? Are you ready to come out? Okay, come. Come out, come. And that's what I, that's what I tell you, he's a good father. Now whenever you put yourself in a certain predicament and you realize that you don't have the mental capacity to understand why you did what you did. God still look and say, listen to me. I am your father. 
it is in you that I'm pleased regardless of what you may have done wrong know that my love for you is greater than you think the love of Jesus Christ the word says if you have no love you're like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal meaning that no matter how much you see me come up here and prophesy about people's life which you see me do going to the deeper depths calling names telling you the first alphabet of a person's name that, 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 that does not matter if I don't have the love of Christ do not be sidetracked by noise be focused on the voice of God when he speaks, he relieves your troubled mind. When he speaks, there's no second guess or second opinion needed. When he speaks, he brings peace to your spirit, to your mind, body, soul. Are you hearing me? Your first love must always be him. No matter what you look at in this world and you think about it and you say, but this is beautiful. Let's not forget one thing. The beauty that you see came from a creator that created it. It is a representation of who Jesus Christ is. Imagine back in the olden days, people, we, they had to, our forefathers, Father Abraham, Moses, all these generals, they had to get up and they had to uh, make offering unto God. Burnt offering and give so much. And, and, and they had to do all these things. But what I love about with God is, he said to himself, listen, if I could find somebody that can stand in the place of my children to give them life and that some more abundantly and God looks at himself and say aha I know someone that can do just that I will send myself in the form of a child so the moment that God looks and he says I know I can't depend on any man but myself sends the message through Gabriel. Gabriel goes to Mary and is telling Mary Mary, Mary, Mary you're about to give birth to a child you have been impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. There's something spectacular about being pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Anything that you're carrying that God placed within you to carry, it is something great that will be generational and will cause nations to hear you why because what he placed in you is not for you but for the world hello hello God looks and he sent his only begotten son which is himself he steps out I want you to tell your neighbor be the carrier of God's glory. When you're the carrier of God's glory, things in your life has no other choice but to line up with the will of God. When you're carrying with God's glory, when you open your mouth and you begin to pray for someone, immediately they feel the presence of God. They know God is in the place. Why? Because you are a carrier of his presence. You don't want to be just a carrier and just a regular guy, a regular woman regular person what you want and your desire should be that you boast in Jesus Christ that he's your savior that he's your friend that he's your mentor he's your life there's nothing that he won't do for you stop focusing on things of this world boy focus on him this is why you see uh, the, the, I tell people all the time I say uh, the language may be different but the sound is the same Amen. read the book of Acts you get to understand that uh, the disciples is up in the upper room and while they're sitting in the upper room there are people downstairs <laughs> sorry and the people being downstairs this is what happened the Bible said that as they were speaking that were downstairs they were sitting there hearing what was going on and they were of a different nation and while they're of a different nation and they're sitting there and they're hearing everything that's going on up there 
they were able to identify what they were saying. But you recognize something. What they were saying upstairs in the upper room was to the Holy Spirit so that those downstairs would know who Christ is. They would know, uh-huh, there's something about them. They are praising. Do you know what they're doing? They're worshiping him. They're praising him. They're speaking in our language. You're not from here. How do you know our language? Listen to me. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you have no choice but to make a certain sound. And you have no choice but to be heard and but to be seen. Why? Because you are doing something that he recognized because he placed it there. Because he put it there. Uh, hello? Because he what? Mm. Listen to me carefully. And understand this by the Spirit of God. Your faith, your trust, every part of you must be in Jesus Christ. What about prophecy? Prophecy. Do you not know your name? Do you not know that your favorite color? It's good to receive direction from God. Yes, but something is wrong if your focus is on the gifts but not the giver. Thank you. It's a, it's a different thing. Some majority of the people today, they can't get healed because their focus is the healing, not the healer. deliverance but they don't want the deliverer listen to me wherever you are or if you're watching online or you're in here if you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ and your focus is him everything that you think you're lacking you're lacking no more do you know why because you're at a place of understanding who he is in your life. Is what I'm saying making sense? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. In heavenly places. May you be seated in heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be quick. I promise I won't keep you. We're going to look at the book of Exodus 40, verse uh, 34. Today we're going to be speaking on the cloud of glory. The cloud of glory. Hallelujah. The cloud of glory. you know for a fact is and I, I, I actually busted out laughing a little bit but I want you to understand something carefully it's, uh, thank you sir Jesus he's working for something today <laughs> but I want you to understand something today yeah you're good right there I love that keep going you may, you may just do something tonight uh, but one of the things that uh things you'll understand that in the Old Testament days you understand that there was something that was built and God spoke to Moses concerning the building of an ark and also the building up of a tabernacle and as long as this thing was built the way that he was commanded for it to be built 
it would cause an atmosphere that would cause God's glory Amen. to enter that place. One thing you do know for a fact is God does not dwell in the things that man hand has built. For those who think the church is the building, you are wrong. The church is not the building. God is not coming for a spotless building. <laughs> no. He's coming for a spotless church. The people. So one thing you understand is that a tabernacle was made. God told him, this is what you should build and put in the tabernacle. And one thing you understand that when we talk about a tabernacle, we're talking about a building. We're talking about a, whether a tent or wherever you go to have church, right? Amen. Okay. But one of the things that got my attention is the fact that something was built. And while this thing was built, it was built, the ark was built in such a way. The tabernacle is built in such a way also. The tent was propped a certain way. And everything in the tabernacle was placed at the place that God told Moses to place it. Some of you, you have built altars unto God. But the reason why you're not seeing the glory cloud is because the altar was not built based off of God's instruction. You build the altar based off your own instruction. So it's not something that is pleasing God. It's not causing God to look down and say, uh-huh, I recognize this thing. Why? You fail to have built an altar the way God wants you to build. Can I be honest with you? Majority of the time, and I've realized something, majority of the time, the reason why you go to some churches and you realize it's cold and it's an icebox place, because God left it. Once upon a time, it had fire. But somebody quenched the Holy Ghost. And in quenching the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, uh-huh, I used to know this place, but that place, I'm not welcome there anymore. Because to quench the Holy Spirit means you're telling him, you're not welcome here. Yes. But one of the things you get to understand is that when it comes to the old biblical truth, the now biblical truth, the future biblical truth, the beginning of the building of an ark of the covenant drew a certain kind of presence. God is telling Moses how to build the ark. But while you build this ark, make sure that I have a place where this ark can be at. At the moment that you're able to put this ark in this area, which is amongst yourselves, because you guys are the church. Mm -hmm. As long as you carry it with you, wherever you're going, bring it with you. Because the ark signifies my glory. So the moment that my glory is there, uh, then you know the cloud of my glory Amen. will be upon you. Hallelujah. I want to show you something. Let's look at Exodus 40 verse 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In other words, filled the people, the church. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yes. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. Uh -huh. Watch this now. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So because of a cloud sitting in the spirit over the tent, Moses could never have gone in because the glory that that cloud brought based off his obedience to God, it was too great for even himself to walk in. Come on. But my, listen to me, everybody else around, I guarantee you, probably not, not all of them 
realized what was taking place. But Moses was able to realize. Why? Because he was spirit. So the moment that he saw in the spirit what was going on, because he's so spiritually mature and seasoned, he knew if I, I can't go in here, this thing is too heavy. Hey, the anointing is too rich. The presence of God is so rich and heavy. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. Amen. So they could move because the cloud of God's glory was over this Good. They couldn't go anywhere. Listen to me. When you build a tabernacle for God, a house for God, in other words, you go home and you have a closet that you call, this is my altar. Listen to me. If you are eager to run out of there, he's not in it. If you are eager to run out of your prayer closet, he's not there. Whenever I go into my time of prayer, the moment I get inside and I open my mouth, I guarantee you, I don't want to leave. And the reason why I don't want to leave is, guess why? It's because you're so beautiful there. I, it's hard for sometimes people to build altar because they don't know what to do and or they know what to do but they refuse to listen and to obey God. But one of the things that I've realized time and time again is whenever we talk about building an altar for the Lord. Carnally, people think that it just means to just go somewhere and just chill. Grab some wood and build something. That's not what it is. It's the mere fact that you find some place in your home and you go and you make that place a place for prayer and time with God. And the moment that you do that and you build an altar for the Lord to come, I'm going to be honest with you. The moment that you start building this altar and you start going there and you go in there the Lord is actually waiting for you to come at the very time you say you will come Amen. and the thing about it that a lot of people don't understand he's super sensitive you know the Holy Spirit is very sensitive uh, did, let me tell you something I don't know if you guys know this but did you know that every church that you see that has a set time for service to begin did you know that those churches the Lord is actually at the door waiting He's waiting. That's true. The moment that it hits the time, he's waiting to see, are you coming for this meeting? Hello? Hello. Yes, are you coming for this meeting? Are you coming for this meeting? I'm here waiting on you. Are you coming? Or are you going to sit in the very place that you're saying that this is where I am? Listen, let me tell you something. Whatever altar you built last year is not the same altar you need to have now. Come on. Something done that you did in creating an altar for the Lord to speak to you. That altar that was made then is not the same altar. What you are asking God for is direction. But the way you asked him for direction last year cannot be the same way you're doing it now. Why? Because the sound that was made was the sound that needed to be made for that season. Teaching good. But for this season, God does not want just a regular sound. What he wants to hear is a certain sound that he himself has placed in you to make. 
Can I be honest with you? Be honest. Yes. There's sometimes you just don't need to open your mouth to say anything. You just have to cry. Sometimes you don't need to cry. Sometimes you just need to lift your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some, all of a sudden, something breaks. Why? Because that's the sound that is needed for that time and that moment. God's glory is upon you. And majority of the time you don't realize God's glory is on you is because you keep listening to the sound that you're hearing which is based off what you're seeing. You're focused on noise. You're focused on other things that is happening in your life. And you're not focusing on who Jesus Christ is in your life. What he has done for you in the past and what he can do for you again. He has done it for you time and time again. There's nothing, listen to me, there's nothing new under the sun. I tell people all the time and I laugh when I say it, but this is the truth. Christians will demonize anything they don't understand. True word. And the reason why, and I've realized that I can't blame them because that's where they, they, their tapping point is. You, no matter how you trying to help somebody, listen, if they ain't got it in them, they ain't going nowhere. It may sound bad, it may sound sad, but if they don't get it, what can you do? You can give, so listen, that's why the Bible says, don't cast your pearls to a swine. Meaning that there's some people, they'll never understand what you're saying, and no matter how you speak to them, and you try to help them, they'll never change. Teaching good. Everything that you speak to them, it goes to the right ear and exit to the left. You mean well for them, you speak to them, you try to let them know this is what needs to happen. You need to just do this, just do this. I'm telling you, the moment you do it, everything in your life will change. You meet them next year again, they're in the same predicament. Ten years past, they're in the same foolishness. Twenty years past, they're in the same foolishness. Why? Because they refuse to have listened. And the moment that you're at the place and you're saying to yourself, why is it? That I'm trying to show you and I'm trying to tell you what to do so that you could understand. You're not listening. Come on. But it hurts you more because you love them. It hurts you more because you're trying to show them, listen, you know how much I love you. I love you a lot. I just need you to, can you just listen for a second? When my wife, sometimes she talks to me. And sometimes I can be a little agitated. I ain't nobody want to hear nothing. But because she says, babe, you know I love you. Just listen to what I'm saying. I have no choice but to listen because I know it's so. So I'll stop and I'll listen. And the moment that I'm listening is the moment that I will experience the truth of what she's saying and I will understand what she's saying. The reason why some of you, you're not understanding when God is speaking is because you don't love him the way you're supposed to love him. He's not the first love, your first love in your life. There's somebody else sitting on the altar of your heart. Something else is sitting there. Is it your child? Is it the grandchildren? Is it your money? Is it the house? Is it the car? Watch this now. Is it depression? Is it worry? Is it anxiety? These are the things that is there that can actually be sitting on the... you're idolizing these things and you're wondering why is it nothing is happening or changing in your life and you're sitting and you're saying to yourself God will provide no yes God will provide but the thing about it is your problem is not provision your problem is obedience you're not listening how can you say to yourself you want something this is my need Father, you know, the single ladies say, oh, Father, just give me the right husband. Yet you don't want to go to the, the certain measures to prepare yourself to be a wife. Come on. You want to be a you want to be you want a wife, but as a man, you're still not focusing on getting things done so you could be a husband. Father, if you give me a husband, Father, I know everything about me will change. No, 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 no. Then you're saying to God that he can't change you. Only a man can. Come on.
If, if you won't even listen to God, what makes you think you listen to a man you can see? Teaching good. The man is sitting there and you're saying, Father, if you give me the husband, I promise you, you know, I'm going to be in church. I'm going to lift your name up. I just want a good man because me, I'm just so tired of being hurt. And God is looking at you like you and I both know if you get this man, you won't even come back to church. Father, give me him because you know, Father, I need a husband. Why do you need a husband so bad? So you can show off a ring. Come on. I, I see you, it's, people don't like truth. Okay, I don't want the women think I'm picking on them. Let's let's look at the man then. Let's balance it. You, I, Father, if you just give me a wife, I, because I, I yeah, why? Why do you want a wife? Just because you want to just show off that you have a pretty girl on your your arm. But yet you don't have the patience to understand the importance of loving someone else but yourself. Come on. Father, give me a wife, Father. I need a wife. There are things that God will never give certain people because he knows if he gives it to them, you lose, they'll lose their soul. Come we on. don't want to gain the whole world and lose our soul because to lose our soul means that eternal damnation in hell True word. your spirit goes back to him because your spirit is his that's one thing the devil can never touch your spirit why it has been grafted it came from God himself but renamed just for you so imagine you go to a funeral, you cry. But you cry because of the person that you lost that went home to be with the Lord. But the truth of the matter, the reason why the word says you should not mourn for those who have gone on before you. The reason why the word says it, and this is why, it's because whenever you mourn, you're mourning, listen carefully, whenever you mourn and you carry on, you're sounding like someone who doesn't know where they went. So you're supposed to only mourn crazily if they never gave their life to Christ. That's when you ball and act crazy. But when you know that you know that they have entered into heaven and you know that, they know, that you know that they're in paradise then and you know that they gave their life to Christ, why mourn and carry on when they're in a better place? It hurts. I've lost people. Of course it hurts. But we don't mourn. We don't cry just because uh, I don't know where they're at. No. We mourn in a way where we know for a fact, okay, they're not here physically anymore. I miss them. But one thing I do know for a fact is they are somewhere where I need to make sure that I end up, which is to be in, with them in heaven. Are you hearing me? Yes. Can I be honest with you? The reality and the truth of the matter is every one of us will die one day. The issue is you don't know how. You don't know when. So you take it for granted. When you get up in the morning, you sit and you say to yourself, you know, I have so many days ahead of me. Do you know why the word says don't uh, worry about tomorrow? Let tomorrow worry about itself. Because even if you plan, you may just, that plan may be left hanging. Are you hearing me? Don't plan for it. You don't know when you're going home. Is If you're afraid to die, you know what it means? It means you, you're, you don't know where you're going. Hello? Hello. Yes. If you're afraid to die, you're saying to yourself, Lord, I will clutch my pearls. Father, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. I can't afford to. I, I don't want to. I'm afraid to. That means you're saying you don't know where you're going. I'm going to be honest with you. I know we all have heard that the coming of the Lord is near. You've heard it for a long, but I'm letting you know it is nearer than you think. 
There's so many things that is happening concerning biblical truth, revelation that is showing up today. And the truth of the matter is everybody's taking it for granted. It makes no sense if I look at you and start prophesying the blessing that's going to come, uh, which we can do easily. But if something is wrong, if watch this, if your eyes is on the blessing, but your eyes is not on the Lord Jesus Christ, where if he comes even before the blessing can arrive, because remember, not because you get prophecy means you live to see it. Come on. Isaiah looks and prophesies Jesus Christ. The moment that Isaiah prophesied Jesus Christ, my guy didn't even get to live to see him. But he prophesied him. Stop focusing on what's around you. Focus on him. The truth of the matter is, there's no, death does not just speak on old people. Death does not care what age you are. That's true. This is why whenever you live your life, you live it pleasing to the Lord. You please him, you don't please. Some of you, you play, you're playing God. You play church. Don't do that. Take him seriously. Yes, you fall. Yes, you make mistakes. Yes, you may have a little weakness. But don't get up from your, the place of weakness and say, ah, oh, I know he'll forgive me. I'm cool. Don't do that. Pray about it. Talk to him. Hello? Hello. People these days don't like truth. And the reason why is because they're totally fine with just hearing any kind of sound, any kind of music. You go to church Monday, but Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're not saved. True word. Saturday you're worse but Sunday morning you'll get up playing the gospel music so why not play the worship music every day Come on. why do you have to wait to blast your music in your car or, or, Jesus God in three persons blessed trinity so you're playing that song only Today is Sunday. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I just feel like the power of God is upon me today. So today is Sunday. I'm going into the hey! But on Monday, you're cussing like a sailor. You flick everybody off. You wake up with vengeance and hatred in your heart. You can remember every bad thing somebody else did to you. Why don't you remember what you have done to the Lord? Come on. You're so busy, you get up, you're worrying about what somebody else did to you 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 5 years ago. And they don't understand that just by you reminiscing on it, it means something. Guess what it means? Unforgiveness. People have done me wrong. But I don't love them based off of the contingent, based on the contingencies of the fact that, uh, you know, they're perfect beings. And as long as they're perfect, no, 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 no man is perfect. Only, only, only one man was ever perfect and that's Jesus Christ. One man. Can I be honest with you? Let me see all those who are tired of just being hurt. I'm being honest, lift your hands. Can I tell you something? You will always be hurt. Come on. I'm sorry to tell you, you will. The day you stop hurting is the day you die. It's called life. In life, you fall, you get up. You can be walking and all of a sudden you just slip, God forbid. You scratch your knee, you got a cut. But who's telling you that you'll never fall again? It's good. Imagine me looking at my, my, my wife and telling her, oh, Lizzie won't fall again. Then she falls tomorrow. Something must be wrong with me. Do you know why you keep falling? Because you're his child. Come on. Amen. Yes. Don't you understand? 
You keep falling because it's a reminder of who you are to him. It's called life. You are going to fall at times. But even when you fall, you have to get up. I tell people all the time, I say, you'll have no's. People are going to look at you and tell you, oh, you, you'll never be anything. But you have a choice whether to receive it or whether to act against it. To act against it means that you ain't receiving it. And I'm going to show you something because I serve a God that will forever take care of me. Come on. And because I know his hand is upon me, I have no choice but to win. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Loud and clear. But I want you to understand something. was the glory of God. And I wanted to read something to you real quick. Let me read something. Let me read something. Uh, let, let me read something. I'm going to show you all something. I thought it was very interesting when I looked it up. You know, I looked at the meaning of a cloud, right? A visible mass of condensed water vapor floating in the atmosphere. Typically high above the ground. A cloud is a visible mass of condensed water vapor. The first thing that you think about when you, when you hear about overcast, you think about rain, right? Why? Because the cloud you know holds water. So you know there's something bound to be released. Yes. Let me tell you something. There's something bound that is about to be released upon your life today. I receive. What God is about to release upon you because of the glory cloud that is over your head. I there's receive. something major that is about to be released upon you today. I receive. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. The cloud represents a certain movement. And that movement that the cloud represents is the movement of God. It's to let a person know, let them know that this cloud that you're seeing that is over this house of God and over this tabernacle is a representation. And it's a representation of who God is. He's so full that when he rests over you, he protects you from being burnt. You know, listen, when the, 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 the children of Israel was leaving, the Bible said that there was a cloud that was following them. And as long as the cloud was following them, listen, by day it was following them. And then at night the fire will come. Do you know why? The cloud represents... Come on represented coverage protection the fire came because at night it would be cool so God made sure that the fire was there to keep them warm come on preaching good there's a time where God's cloud will be over you and then there'll be a time where fire will be over you why because there's sometimes the cloud would represent protection and coverage from anything or anyone. Notice it would have been pelting hot. But God made sure he sent the cloud. Listen to me. I want you to understand something today. Whatever you're going through, know this. God has given you cloud. A cloud of glory. Not a cloud of depression. Not a cloud of stagnation. Not a cloud of defeat. Not a cloud of problems. Not a cloud of poverty. Not a cloud of lack. Not a cloud of oppression. But he has placed a cloud of glory Amen. over you. Reminding you who he is in your life. Reminding you that he is God of your life. Reminding you that he is who he say he is. The great I am. The bright and morning star. The lily of the valley. The rose of Sharon. I let somebody open your mouth. Hallelujah. Understanding what I'm saying today, I want you to understand that because of this glory cloud that is over you, it is very hard for you to be able to be.
cloud of God's glory over your life. It's like walking under an open heaven. And one of the things you have to understand is this. God will never give you much more than you can bear. Amen. Can I be honest with you? Be honest. You feel the way you feel overbearing because you're still trying to depend on your own strength. You're in pain. You're having a problem because you're still focusing on what you can do. You have become independent, not dependent on him. Well, you know, God, I can, I believe I can. I, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, not through myself. Through Christ that gives me strength. Meaning that the strength that God gives to you will cause you to be able to go through anything. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. The devil wants you to understand and listen to me. There's different clouds. You have the cloud of God's glory, but you have a cloud of depression and oppression, the cloud of problems, the cloud of foolishness. Wow. Cloud of heaviness. Sometimes you look at people all of a sudden, it's like you just see them being heavy. Why? There's a cloud of heaviness over them. But watch this. The reason why there's a cloud of heaviness over them is because they have created that atmosphere. Come on. This is why some of you, you keep hanging with people that goes nowhere. And you wonder why the cloud of problems keep following you. Come on. Because you keep, and some of you, you make excuses for people. What are you doing that for? You don't love yourself? I love myself. Before I didn't. I re Listen, let me tell you all something. One of the worst things you can do, the worst thing you can do is putting yourself in a place of being in pain while other people are enjoying their lives. I used to do it. I'm 29 now. I did it the majority of the time of my life. Now, I don't care. I back away. I move on. I have no time for that. I don't care who you are, what you is. Honestly. The reason why, the moment I see that there's a problem, the moment I see that there's an issue and you're messing and tampering with my peace, I'm not going to argue with you. Come on. I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Love you. I stop. And then I, one of the things, I, 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 even with me and myself, you know, I struggle with temper. Lord, you, you pray for me, everybody. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm going to be honest with you. The Bible never said that being angry is a sin. The word says be angry, but sin not. Meaning that it's okay to be angry, but the problem is what you do with the anger that you're feeling. So I decided something with myself. Anything that makes me get angry, I. Uh -huh. wow. It's simple. Because I realize that if I keep getting angry and I keep falling into that trap, then I'm messing myself up. Because the other person won't care enough. No, I'm serious. This is why you have to be careful. Don't give people power over you. If you let somebody control you by words that they're speaking. Yes, listen, there's weight in words. Don't let anybody tell you. Uh, you know, there's a saying that says, uh, uh, sticks and stones may break out, words may never hurt. Baloney. Baloney. Not the one you eat. The foolishness. Foolishness. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Words carries weight. Words, they're like, they're, words is a garment. Anybody that looks at you and is speaking concerning your life, you and you receive it, you are putting on the garment that they're speaking over your life. That one will never make it. And you say, hey, I don't think I'll ever make it. Ah, you're putting on that garment. 
today I prophesy may every evil garment placed on you from you were a child knowing or unknowingly may it catch fire now Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen. garments you are wearing because of what someone said the state you are in I'm telling you you will never come out of that the devil is a liar I refuse to wear that garment that is not my portion do you know who I am I am who God says I am I am the head and not the tail I'm above and not beneath Amen. do you know who I am anything you say has no power Amen. that garment you're trying to put on me may that be your portion yeah I don't play what did you say your kids will never be anything <laughs> what you say may that be your portion may that clothes be your clothes for the rest of your days may even your kids wear them clothes yes yes you okay, know people like to play games they talk about people especially pastors kids for thought, don't touch minds. Come on, leave minds alone. Amen. You have to be careful what you receive. You're sitting there and you're receiving everything somebody else says, and you believe it. And the worst thing about it is, you believe negativity, but when it comes to positive things, you have a hard time receiving it. Wow. So that means there's a spirit inside of you. That is only receiving bad negative. Come on. Preaching good. Can I tell you something? Tell us. The Bible said the anointing destroys the yoke. The, the anointing also attracts attacks. Come on. Yeah, you, everybody here one side and they don't know the truth. I'll tell you spiritual truth. They don't know these things. The anointing attracts attacks. You wonder why God is raising you, then all of a sudden things start coming out of the woodwork. Why? People have things to say. Why? God is raising you. Wow. God is elevating you. And believe it or not, there's so much attacks and foolishness that is happening. But understand when we listen to me carefully, listen to me. Nobody can control you but you. You can control every atmosphere that you will to have around you. Every time you answer certain people, you're stooping to their level. Value yourself. Don't sit and look at yourself and say, well, this is what God wants for my life. Who told you that? Wow. Well, I heard people telling me, go left, go right. What about straight? They even told me, make go left, go right, go back. What about straight? I don't think you should marry him. Have you seen him? He struggles with anger. You're right. I struggled with the same thing Jesus struggled with, a little anger. You know Jesus was angry. He threw over the table in the and whipped, you remember? Uh-huh. And whipped them back string. Yes. Yes, I got the whoosh. This is my father's house. Do you know where you're at? Get out of my father's house. You should not be selling in my father's house. You didn't kill anybody. You didn't commit murder. He was angry. Stop receiving every word you hear. Especially when it's a negative one. Listen to me. 
Be careful who you let into your life to speak into your life. Whatever spirit is following them, the moment you let them speak into your ear, it will start to follow you. Be careful. Don't entertain everybody. Hang around with certain kind of people. Be wise. Don't let your heart lead you astray because your heart can lead you astray. I just saw them and I just, I just felt led just to invite them to my house. That's why every component set in your house is gone. That's why you can't find your jewelry. Some of you don't understand the reason why some people... Let me shut my mouth. Come on. You, you let certain people in your house and they come in your house and they take one of your underpants and you can't find it. You're wondering what's going on. Take it and they work in witchcraft with it. This is the truth. Yes. Be careful who you let into your life. Be wise. What God has for you is for you. But you can delay that blessing if you keep letting the wrong people speak into your ear. Because then now you won't be able to walk into the fullness and the goodness of God. You know why? You keep listening to every sound you hear and you keep saying that one is God. Come on. But the truth of the matter is this. People keep thinking that when God speaks, you ought to be comfortable with it. God going to tell you to do some things that you don't even want to do. I don't like roller coasters, but if God told me to get on a roller coaster, I'm going to have to go. You see that? It's very uncomfortable. But this is what Christians do. I ain't going on no roller coaster. I don't care who said what. I ain't going on that roller coaster, but they don't understand that God telling them to go on the roller coaster was to release something. So could it be that God is sending you on that roller coaster so that the spirit of fear could leave you? Come on. I'm afraid to step out. I'm afraid to start this business because everybody in my life, especially my family, they start businesses but they don't finish it. It, it always crashes and God says won't you get up and start that business I am afraid to start it because I've been seeing this so God is trying to take you out of your comfort zone but you're busy trying to make an excuse to why he shouldn't I'm not used to it this is your problem you guys want some people want uh, Christians want things that they're used to to confirm what God is saying. Some people like older men of God because they say they're more seasoned and matured and everything. And they hear from God. But when they see young ministers of the gospel, a young Jamaican, black Jamaican guy, they have a problem. You know why? Because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why is God using him? He's only young. Why? 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 They don't understand. You may look at me as unqualified, but to him, I'm qualified. Amen. If anybody asks me, many times people ask me, why did God use you? I look at, I look at them and say, you ask him and tell me. Can I be honest with you? Where God is about to take you, you're not going to see some people around you. And the reason why you won't see certain people around you is because, and it's going to hurt some, 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 some of it is going to hurt. But the reason why you won't really see them around you is because where you're going, they, they can't handle the kind of oxygen level that is up there. Amen. They have shorter breath. 
Jamaica will say, well, shut up, Brett, eh? Shut up, Brett. They can only handle so much oxygen at that level. There's some people, I'm going to be honest with you, your, the atmosphere that... God, this is why... <laughs> You better stop playing. Don't don't let me don't let me give you this mic. Oh. The eagle never wastes his time when the snake tries to grab him. What he does, he ignores the snake and takes it to a higher altitude. Because the snake was not built for the top. He was built to feed on the ground. There's some people right now, they have a hard time in your life because they're like snakes that God is trying to remove. Teach it good. Snakes has a hard time to breathe up there because they were not built for it. There's some people in your life, they can't breathe where you're at right now. And if you're, listen, they're around you now, you know. But you see when you start taking off, what you gonna do you have to understand that God called you he didn't call them God never told Sarah about moving he told Abraham Sarah went because of the companionship and a covenant made to her husband some of you you try to marry people that God has already divorced from your life true word and you're busy trying to take somebody with you that God literally looked and said listen my guy this is not going to work you know God has listen you know many of you inside here God has spoken to you about moving forward and moving to places doing whatever God to, and some of you are still trying to hold on to people what are you doing that for come on Father, I know you will do it. You will do great and mighty things. You're praying, praying, praying. And, and, and I always tell people this, and this is the absolute truth. Majority of the time, people, they run for prophetic word all over the place, but they fail to listen and obey the first word. So how can you be running around looking for a prophetic word for somebody else if you fail to obey the first prophetic word you got? Amen. You don't even obey the first word, but you want another prophetic word. Have you started on the first prophetic word yet? What are you doing about it? But you're looking for another word. You don't understand that when God speaks to you and you obey him, you have aligned yourself. Come on. The moment you align yourself, you know, the blessing will come. The doors will open but you don't align yourself, then you will not see what God has for you. So you will be like every other Christian that is still waiting 20 years. I'm still waiting on God. Next 10 years, I'm still waiting on him. I'm I know he's faithful. He will do great things. They sound so believing, but they're so defeated Amen. because they're so disobedient. They're so stubborn. They don't listen. I'm waiting on God. I know he will do it for me. Yes, he will do it for you, but when are you going to listen? God is looking at you like, are you ready? You desire to be great. You desire to be successful. You desire to be blessed. Follow him. Follow his commandments. Obey what he says that he will do, what he tells you to do, obey him. Don't look at me and tell me that you, you are all in for the blessing, but you're not all in for the ride. Come on. Jonah tried running. What happened to him? Ended up in the belly of a fish. But can I be honest with you? I will be very honest with you. What if Jonah didn't come to his senses to jump off the boat? Then everybody else on that boat would have gone down with him. Be careful that you're not causing people to feel because of your foolishness. Lack of obedience. 
Too good. Be careful. What God has for you, you have to obey Him. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking it's about you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Amen. If it was about you, if it was about me, trust me, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. I'm serious. I wouldn't be preaching the way I'm preaching now. I wouldn't be prophesying. I wouldn't be doing all that. I would have been doing what I want to do. You think this is what I want to do? No. It's not. What I want to do is to act, to, to do my acting stuff and, and, and to do music and sing, uh, uh, what do you call it, reggae and um, dance hall and all them things there. But instead, we up your preach. And who would I do good out there, you know? Yeah, man, would I do good? Yes. But because I decided to follow him and decide to obey him, I said to myself, you know what? And trust me, one of the things that I've realized is this. Whatever you think you're missing on your journey with God, you're fooling yourself. Trust me, you didn't miss anything. Oh, you know, if I did this, I would have been rich by now. Rich, but without a soul. Lost soul. No peace. You know how many rich people right now is killing in themselves? They have so much money. Some of you, your dependency is in people. You know, when I was young, I used to always have to, I thought I have to prove myself to people. So I would try my best to prove myself to people to let them know, you know, I love you and I care about you. I really am here. Why won't you accept me? Now, I don't care one shando. <laughs> no, I don't. You know why? Because I know my value. So it's not my fault that you're so blind to see value. And for you to value value. Some of you, the people you hang with, they don't even value you. They tolerate you. But you're so busy trying to suck up to them that you don't even realize they don't even like you. One of my sons said something the other day. He said something and he said, he looked and he said, man. <laughs> All of y'all are sitting here having me think you like me or you don't like me. I say, hey, the truth has come out. I'm serious. You know one thing I love about a socket, a power socket, a wall socket? Anybody can put a, a cover over the socket, but you can plug the, the whatever way you want to plug in there. But listen to me carefully. When you plug in there, remember this. You won't always get power. Do you know why you won't always get power? Because that socket is dead. Stop trying to plug into people that is going nowhere in life. They think they are, but they're not. Listen, if you don't plug your phone in, your phone will not charge. Which means you would not have communication with anyone. Which means which is dangerous because then you could be driving something happening, you don't have anybody to call. Your tire could have blow out, you don't have anybody to call because your phone is dead. So what you don't understand is that a dead person can cause dead things to happen to you. So you're looking and you're wondering to yourself, ever since this, I've just been is happening for you because who you're hanging with is a dead person it's a dead man walking be 
careful who is in your face. Be careful who is in your ears. Be careful who is walking with you. Be careful who tell you they love you. Be careful who tell you they got you. Be careful who tell. Be careful. Don't believe every sound you hear. Listen to me. I don't know if you realize this. When you're on the road driving, not every time you see the police turn on the siren, it is actually something happening. Sometimes they just want to turn it on to go through a red light. There's no emergency. It's just to get to where they need to get to fast. You ever heard a story about the boy who called Wolf? Wolf! No Wolf the first time. Wolf! No Wolf the second time. Wolf! There was Wolf the third time, but nobody came. Why? Because this entire time, he's been calling Wolf. People came, but realized he was lying. There's some people that it looks like they're in need and they look like they're for you. They're just crying wolf. Nothing is wrong with them. What they want is just somebody to lift them up themselves. So let me ask you a question. If you can barely lift yourself up, why are you trying to lift somebody up? <laughs> I remember one time when uh, my my I, I we, we were low in finances and I was helping everybody and their mama as my wife would say and I remember there was time where there was no money for bills and my wife looked at me and she said to me she looked at me and she said to me You know, you're helping everybody, but what about yourself and your family? Because now, everybody's bill is because you paid it. But what about your bill? You see? I looked at her and I said to myself, I said, you know, you're right. And I promised myself I'll never do it again. So what I start doing is this. If you're suffering, good job. Figure it out. There's some people, you're a benefit to them. And as long as you feed them, they'll be loyal to you. <laughs> as long as you can do something for them, they got you. But as soon as you no longer will ever stand up for that foolishness anymore, then they start saying you switched up. But, you know, actually it's correct. You did switch up. You realize your own value. And realize something different. You realize that this entire time you're like a chicken without a head. Somebody's taking you for a fool. Deceiving you. You know I got you. My oh boy, man. I got you, bro. Hey, you think you can spot me a hundred? Have you ever realized that there's some people, you're there for them. But when it comes to your time, they're nowhere to be found. But yet you kill yourself up over them. Run even your blood pressure. Not me, baby. Value yourself. When you're walking with the Lord, you have to understand because you're a carrier of who he is in your life. You have to understand who you are because of who you're carrying. Don't tell me that you want to be a wife, but you keep hanging with single women. Don't tell me you want to be a husband, but you keep hanging with boys that keep fooling around with other women. Don't tell me you want good people to come into your life and to be a blessing to you, but you keep treating people like crap. Don't tell me that you want people to value you, but you don't even value yourself. How can somebody value somebody that you know you don't value yourself. Don't tell me you want people to have a pure heart towards you, but your heart is bitter. You complain about everything else with everybody else, but you're not looking at yourself. You, you lying hypocrite. You're busy looking at everybody else and their mistakes. What about yours? You want everybody to forgive you when you say, I'm sorry. But you won't forgive when somebody will say, I'm sorry. Hypocrite. Come on. You, you, you want 
to do all this. You, this is what you want. You want so much, but you don't want to give anything. Be careful of those people. Some people, I remember I used to make comments as, uh, the only thing I've not done is take up my heart and give it to them. So I, I decided in myself, if I have to go that far, then I need to go sit myself down somewhere. You know, one thing I love about T.D. Jakes, Pastor T.D. Jakes and Pastor Joel Olstein, I love when they, te- when they preach, because when they preach, they just encourage. And man, ain't they church filled. But I'm going to give you a joke. Yet you have other pastors fighting them. But they're fighting them because they're jealous of the following they have. And the truth of the matter is, people will always try to kill and fight what they can't get. Instead of asking how to get it. What's your secret ingredient and the secret recipe to your success? I may not be able to do exactly what you did, but probably I could use tools that you have used. And that tools that I can use, I can easily take it and use it. I say it all the time. There's no father like my father. Dr. Anthony McKenzie, the prophet of prophets. Love him very much. But one thing I always say is this. Nobody can teach like my brother. Nobody. That I've experienced can teach like him. When when he's teaching, when Prophet Law is teaching, it's so profound that it's like chicken. You have no choice but to grab it by the, and just start eating the chicken. But the issue that people will have is that they'll easily condemn and fight men of God that they don't understand because they don't understand them. There are some people that hate you but they, because they don't understand you. That's why they try to talk what they want to talk. Listen to me. In this season, God is about to shift people from over, out of your life. I receive. Can you, can you do me a huge favor? Yes. Let them go. Where you're going, it's too great. You don't want to be trying to get oxygen tank to help somebody to breathe at a place that they were not even invited to. I don't care what nobody say, but the absolute truth is this. You will have a a little jet and you try to bring 30 people on a 12-seater. The pilot will tell you, and this thing will not lift the ground. Because the weight, the capacity... You go into an elevator, they say the capacity is 2,500 pounds. But pack too much people in there, what do you think is going to happen? Look at the elevator as your life. Your life is to only have certain people that God is sending to you. You're wondering why is it destiny helpers can't locate you? Because there's people in your life that will move those destiny helpers away. Don't do that. God is doing something in your life. Let him do it. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Don't ever look at yourself and say to yourself, uh, this is exactly what I'm thinking. So because of this is exactly what I'm thinking. I'm assuming that based on what I'm thinking, this is how it should go. Because your assumption can be your downfall. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be prosperous. Everybody wants to be rich. Yes, hello. Yes. But however, when it's time to tell you how to get there, nobody wants to listen. Everywhere you go, I don't care how much appointments you set, there's, some, there's a place in that place that's called a waiting room. Stop thinking that everywhere you go, you'll just get there. You, you still have to wait. Why? Because the word said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Your strength is not being renewed because you're not waiting. Amen. You're not mounting up with wings like an eagle because you're not waiting. Amen. Wait on him. Don't try to go out there to find people to come and come into your life. Wait, let God send somebody. Don't try to go out there and prove yourself to people. What for? What's the use of it? 
I was telling one of my sons yesterday, I said, listen to me, I don't care how long a person has been in my life. If God tells me to drop them, I'm dropping them. Because even the time frame of that, it may be a problem to God. Are, you guys are listening to me? Yes. Loud and clear. Listen to me now, you know. When God elevates you, understand this. Not everybody's about to go with you. Let people go. Move on with what? Whatever God wants to do in your life. I guarantee you, if you go and ask a lot of uh, multimillionaires today, they'll tell you right now, a lot of people they started with, they're not with them. Some of them will tell you some changed, some changed towards me, some switched up against me. Some of them, they say they got me, but then ever since I start making the money that I start making, for some reason, it just eroded something in them. They got jealous for no reason. They started fighting me. They started fighting against me. Now they start saying, I, I'm, I'm acting like I'm better than them. Now they're saying, oh, I forgot about them. So they're coming up with all these other excuses because they want to point it back at you, to manipulate you. To cause you to think that you're the problem. Look at you. Some of you don't want to accept the truth. They will look at everybody else. They look at the problem. Oh, that, that. But the truth of the matter is, the problem is them. I can speak like this because this is a family affair. If we had visitors, then that would be different. But this is not a visitor. That's my son. <laughs> Been my son for years. God is about to elevate you. Let some people go. Stop making excuses for people in your life. Be honest with yourself. Some, can I be honest with you? Some of you in here, you don't listen. And this is why you see you fall into the same traps over and over again. You, did you know some people, they will continue feeling pain. Nothing is happening in their life because they still haven't, it hasn't registered. This, can I be honest with you? Let me see all those who have somebody that is honest with them. You have somebody in your life that is honest with you, that is not afraid to tell you something about yourself. Keep them. Anybody that can stand with you, but is not honest with you, they're fakes. It means that they're willing to watch you fall and then talk after you fall. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is something powerful. Proverbs, you see Proverbs? Powerful. Wisdom is something lacking in people, but sometimes it's not wisdom, it's lack of common sense. There was a screw that was unscrewed that was never put back. Jamaica would say common sense, not as common no more. It's quite capital. <laughs> no common sense no more, it's a capital sense. It's common, you know, meaning you're supposed to know it. That's uh, Listen, there are certain vehicles that's quite common. And certain vehicles that people don't want it because it's common. It's not something that draws attention. Mm. Let, me, let me see who understand what I'm saying. Toyota is a very common car. Common brand. Lexus, common. Volkswagen, common. Nissan, common. Mazda, common. Maybach, that is not a common car. <laughs> Rolls Royce, not common. Watch me now, I'm just trying to help somebody. There's certain vehicles that's not common. This is why their value is expensive. Do you know why some of you, you're still hanging with the same people? Because you keep being with commoners. So you will always attract common things. Amen. You want people to have value? Look at you as value? Change up some things in your life from today. Listen, there's some people right now, I just look at them as, listen, I know your worth to me. I respect you, so I've, I just treat you based off of... But I don't waste my time. There's some people that you just need to... And I'm, Listen, you guys promise... You guys, you guys understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There's some people you just speak to them and you leave it alone. 
Leave it, man. You give people so much power over you. Giving God nothing to work with. You believe what everybody has to say about you, but you're not believing what God says about you. This is why the cloud that you're carrying is not cloud of glory, but cloud of problems. Because you have attracted the very thing you're believing. I don't care how long the person has been with you. My brother and I, we've been together for over 20 years. And ask him, there's a lot of other guys that we, and, and friends, girls too, that we have had as friends growing up. But where are they now? Are we going to kill up ourselves over, the, over it? We don't cry over spoiled milk. Is that how you say it? Spilled milk or spoiled? It's spoiled milk? Spilled. Oh, spilled milk. Oh, okay. That's because you're on your father's side. Give me a high five. It's, no, it's still spoiled. I say spoiled. Because it's spoiled. You know, the other day I was drinking milk and I really honestly, I, so I poured the cereal first. And I poured the milk assuming it was good. And when I pour it, I was drinking and I realized there's a thick kind of thing. I said, that is not the cereal. I said, what is that? But I already had some in my stomach. The moment I'm sitting there, I'm drinking the, the cereal. I said, this is not God. So I hurried up and I, I turned because the light was off. You see how much faith I had in the cereal and the milk? And the milk. I looked at the milk. I had so much faith. I said, this milk will not fail. It won't fail. <laughs> it won't fail. <laughs> this milk is my fair foundation. <laughs> I had the milk. I'm I turn on the light. I see pulps in the milk. I throw it out. The reason why something is actually affecting you is because the light around you is off. Come on. Help Turn us. it on so you can see who's... Help us. Turn on the light. Set some fire. Just to see. Will you stand? Are you here for me or are you here for it? Amen. There's a major shift that is about to take place in 2024. Amen. It's going to be powerful. As a matter of fact, uh, New Year's is going to be dope. It's going to be heavy prof prophecy. I'll even prophesy what's to come for 2024. Amen. <laughs> I'm serious. New Year's resolution. What's your New Year's resolution? Habakkuk 2 verse 2 and 3 say, Write your vision down, make it plain. Though it tarry, it know it will come. What's your New Year's resolution? What do you have on your vision board for the New Year? And have you begun it? Are you comfortable with those around you? Or are you saying to yourself, Father, I realize that... Uh, so Father, I thank you for destiny help us. Some of you, you're holding on to people that can only get you to the door. And you're thinking that those are the same ones that will get you through it. You have to let people be who they are in your life for a time and a season. Lifetime people, they have eternal keys. It's, I call them the universal kind of people. You know what, you know, you know what a universal remote is? As you can pair it to any television. I'm telling you, I'm going to be honest with you. Some people, they're meant to leave your life now, but come back later. The issue is the reason why there are problems in your life now is because you don't let them go. Some of them may come back. Sometimes they won't come back. It all depends. But you have to understand that regardless of the fact that they may come back, what are they coming back with? If they're coming back with the same foolishness. Because if that's the case, continue up the road. But if they're coming with change, then okay, we're cool. Don't come back with your foolishness. No, well, don't come back with it. Tonight, today is a heart to heart. To heart. Can we have a heart to heart? Eh? Yes. This is cool? I'm telling you where you're about to go. 
over you even now. Two angels just came in the room. Listen to me. The cloud of God's glory is over you today. Be wise. Be wise. As you move forward, as you move up in life, be wise. Be wise. Certain doors that is closed now that you shut, leave it shut. Stop trying to tamper with it. Leave it shut. If somebody has not come back in your life yet, it's okay. You love them, you know, but let them go. They'll come back in due time. When they come back, though, if they come back with their foolishness, tell them, listen, go back up the road, you know. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> is, is, uh, is he a good woman of God? I'm serious. You can only do so much for people you love. And one thing I teach you is this. When people genuinely love you, they see your heart. And they will work as hard to not let you down because they know you love them that much. To help them, to correct them, to bless them. So you know that when you see them, you know they're trying. Because they're willing to even humble themselves just for the sake of you. This is what I believe. If, if I have people in my life that I can't talk to, but they want to talk to me, they need to go sit down somewhere. You can't want to talk to me, but then if I talk to you, you don't want to listen. I can't tell, I can't, I can't, there's no way. My wife could be talking to me, and I'm not, I don't want to listen to what she's saying. Then how can she listen to me? I, I, I dislike when I hear men bragging on, Oh God, told, I'm the head. What I say goes. A woman has a right to speak. Yes, your wife has a right to speak. The only thing I always say is, and this is me, don't act crazy. Don't yell. Don't raise your voice because I don't do that. Make your point, but make sure you make your point in a very nice, calm, respectful way. I, always, I hear that song talking about R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. Who is that? Who sing that song? Aretha Franklin? That song, some of y'all women sing it. Stop singing it. Women don't need respect. Men do. The Bible never said a woman needs respect. The Bible said woman needs love. Where there's love, there's automatic respect. A woman has to respect her man. The moment she respects her man, he gives her man the strength, listen to this, the power, listen to this, and the authority to continuously move in wisdom and knowledge and strength. Meaning that when a woman respects her husband, the husband will feel so good in his, inside of him to love and honor his wife. Amen. However, if you're with a woman, if you're with someone that they, they, they don't love you, check yourself. Have you been respecting them? Have you been respecting him? Men, check yourself. My wife doesn't love me. Have you, uh, my wife doesn't respect me. Have you been loving her? She's doing everything she can. She doesn't cause problems. She doesn't have attitude problems. She doesn't raise her voice. She doesn't have this attitude. But yet she's always so humble. She comes, she serves you so well. She loves your family. She respects your mother. She loves you. And you're wondering to yourself, eh? Hello? Now you understand what I'm saying? In this season right now, as God is about to elevate you, listen, we're in the month of November. We have one more month before the year ends. Do not go with this baggage into 2024. You have a whole month and, and, and change to let people go of your life. You think I'm afraid to do it? Trust me. I don't care. Because somebody, you just got to let them go. You love them, but you got to let them go. Some people is worth fighting for. I'm serious. Some people is worth fighting for. Some people, you look at them, you're like, listen, we, you know I love you. We come from too far. I don't like that Shando that you did. But I sure love you to Shando. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> we'll figure it out, but I needed to hold your end of the bargain. 
there's an understanding. Too much weight in an elevator will never go up. Some of you, you are a Boeing in the spirit. You can handle it. Some of you, you're a helicopter. You can only go so high. Some, you're a private jet. You can handle it, but you can't handle too much. Some of you, you're a big yacht and a big ship. You can handle certain pressures. Some of you, listen, you got, you got it. But today, I, I'm telling you, you are all eagles. I receive. So you have to understand that as God is elevating you, whoever it is that's not going to where you're going, be okay with the fact, and listen, stop giving people too much attention. Amen. That especially when they don't show no form of reciprocation of what you're giving. Don't do that. The eagle didn't has yet to waste its time on the snake. Because the eagle knows that the snake, all that he needs to do. You know what? You know what the issue is? The reason why some of you still go on the same out with the same kind of people is because you keep on going to their level. Get up and soar. Go higher. Are you hearing me? Yes, Go higher. Stop focusing on what's around you. Go higher. The higher you go is the less problems you find that you'll have around you. Change the atmosphere. Shift it. Your atmosphere shifts and changes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. Shift it. Stand to your feet. Today is just a family affair. Just family time. I could easily teach and go deep in teaching, but today this is what was needed. And the reason being, and I'm sorry if you were watching other pastors and they spoke so powerfully today. That was for their congregation and that's what God told them to preach on. But today I obeyed the Lord on what he wants us to do. You have to understand something. In this season, you have to understand that when God is about to do something big in your life, there's a shift that takes place. And sometimes the shift has to do with people around you. And I'm going to tell you the honest truth right now. Some of you will never go higher than where you're at right now if you have the wrong kind of people around you. Stop making excuses for people. Let people be. Michael Jackson said, I'm talking to the man in the mirror. Some of you, you have some dirty, nasty, stinking ways. Drop it. You're so arrogant. Calm down before God slaps you. You know yourselves. You can hear me. Calm down. Humble yourself. The Bible said that humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you. You will never be exalted if you lack humility. Humble yourself. Do you think I'm all that? I'm nothing. There's a difference between arrogance and confidence. I am very confident and I will not change for anybody. But one thing I will not do is to be arrogant. My 15 year old can correct me. My child can, my baby girl can correct me. I'm taking a picture a certain way. My son is saying, Dad, that's, you don't want to do it that way. Just do it this way. I say, eh. Oh, you're right, you know. And I click it and it looks good. I don't look too ugly. 
it has an effect that made me look good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Humble yourself. The Bible said, uh, 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 pride cometh before destruction. Pride is an easy thing that can come upon you easily. Listen, you just have to start acting a certain kind of way in certain kind of situations. And the spirit of pride will begin to arise in you. Then you find out that things in your life start going A-wired, D-wired, C-wired, even Z-wired. Why? You went from A all the way to Z. You were once at the head. Now you become the tail. Why? Because such a person is sitting and is saying to themselves, I got it. You don't have nothing. Got what? Humble yourself. Let God elevate you. Let God take you to a higher level. What is it that God is saying that you need to do that will cause him to bless you? Are you humble enough that if he tells you, leave this place and go here? Talking to one of my sons last night, I was telling him, stop stressing about these things. You're worrying about the wrong things. I was talking with my son. I said, son, listen. Things around you that you look at as a problem, it's not a problem. There are solutions for it. And the solutions that we have for this problem is based off of what we have that we can use to do whatever we need. Wow. Let me tell you something, and forgive me for saying this, but some of you, you keep acting like you're a problem. And that all you know to do is to have problems. Listen to me. All of you in here, God has given you the grace to be solution. I receive. You have the solution. You have the solution. Why? Because you have God. Don't tell me that you're in a certain pickle and you, you, you still, you're crying, complaining, stressing, depressing out yourself. Some of you, you'd lack, you're not listening. God wants to help you. God wants to bless you. God wants to lift you. But you're so busy moving like you are a peasant. Some of you, you, you talk about being wealthy, you talk about being prosperous, you talk about being in the palace, yet you keep acting like you're a peasant. There's a difference now in being a peasant, knowing that you're for the, the throne, watch this, versus you going through the things that makes you look like a peasant. And you ain't acting like a peasant. But the certain circumstances makes it look as if you are. Versus you acting like one. Joseph never acted like he was nothing. He always knew he was something. This is why when they placed him in the pit, somebody looked him, sold him, look. I don't think you guys understand what I'm trying to tell you. Do, do you know why the man sold Joseph into slavery? Do you know why he sold Joseph? Because at the time, the vision of what the man looked at Joseph, Joseph being in the pit means that he had no value. So the man took him out of the pit, assuming he had no value. The person who bought him and placed him in the palace to work positioned him in the place to serve the way that Joseph did because of the side that he had Amen. Joseph is serving watch this the wife the queen looks at Joseph and wants Joseph's attention why? Because she saw the value. Despite that he was just a regular man that was serving in the capacity that he was serving. See, some of you got to understand the reason why some people want to try to itch on to you is because they see what you got. She said, you know, know what I'm going to do with him. I'm going to try to seduce him. Watch this. She tries to seduce him. 
but he runs out and the Bible said that she grabbed a piece of the garment and ripped it to lie on him that he tried to seduce her watch this when she ripped the garment she showed them look he tried to rape me and I grabbed him just in time so that way he would Joseph had no choice but to be in prison because of who spoke let me tell you some. there's some people that want to talk about you but let them talk about you because that's not the final truth of what God is saying oh. Joseph ended up in the prison for two years but that couldn't hold him down. Why? Because Joseph was busy being who God wanted him to be. Some of you, you're busy looking at people, getting people's attention. Stop it. Stop doing it. What does he say about you? What did he say concerning you? What's the promise that he made you? What did he say that will happen to you concerning your life? You're busy looking for confirmation and affirmation from people. I just need a word of encouragement. Go sit your tail down somewhere. You have all the encouragement that you need. The encouragement that you need is concerning the promises of God for your life. Some of you, you want a word? Go take up the Bible. I guarantee you, majority of the time you open the word of God, it will fall on a scripture that you need. Amen. Why? Because God is, you are learning to depend on him. I'm not saying that going to us prophets is wrong. I'm not saying that. But something is wrong if you have no being because you don't have a prophet. Take up the Bible and open the word. Read the word. Study to show thyself approved. Study meaning what? The more you read the word and you find yourself reading the word, it's very hard for somebody to come and tell you something that God himself did not say concerning you. Some of you, you, you love noise. If the music sounds good, you love it. Some of you, you're emotional worshipers. As long as they hit a certain chord, it wow. does something to you. If they hit a certain note, it does something to you. But if the music is off, then you're, you're not worshiping no more. You know why? Because you're an emotional worshiper. I'm going to scientifically show you something very scientific. And then I'm going to collaborate with the things of the spirit. Your body is made up of 75, 70 to 75 percent water. One thing you understand is that water carries a certain wave of a sound. So technically the reason why a person may be emotional as an emotional worshiper is because their body is made up of 75% of something that... So based off of a chord that you hear, so, can I be honest with you? Let me see how those who have... You, you have a favorite song that you... You ever see some people that when they go to church they're sitting doing worship. But as soon as a certain song plays, they get up and they lift their hands. That, those are emotional worshipers. There's not a, a certain song you want to hear for you to worship God. You're supposed to worship in spirit and in truth. Meaning whatsoever song that is played, you need to make sure that it's ministering to you. You, need, you bring, you listen, you practice the presence of God. The moment that you get up on a Sunday morning or a Friday night or whatever it is, day you come for service. You are supposed to bring the presence of God with you. You don't come to church waiting for the presence of God to fall. Are you mad? You spiritual babies. No, no, no. Make sure God is in the car with you. So when you come to church, you are adding to the presence of God. Not taking away from the presence of God. Not disrupting the flow of the Holy Ghost. You know, you have people that come in church when they go inside of the church. They're the first one to complain about things. You know why they complain about it? Because they're baby Christians. Their focus is as long as they feel good. Y'all ain't hearing me. Let the music play. So 
what? So you are crying on a Sunday. Why not cry Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? But you want to come to church and cry. Isn't he not good on Mondays? Isn't he not good on Tuesdays? Is he not good on Wednesdays? Isn't he not good on Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays? But on Sunday he's good. Only Sundays. You only practice the presence on a Sunday. When was the last time you turned up your music? Crank it loud playing a gospel song. When was the last time you blast the roof playing a worship music? What was the last time you did that? But you can go and turn on a secular music and blast it, bopping your head until you have neck problem. But when it comes to worshiping God, you can't do that. You're easily taking your money, you're buying and doing whatever you want. But when it comes to building the house of God, you don't even give an offering. You don't do anything. Yet the word says that you need to show God, prove him to be who he is. When it comes to stuff like that, you don't do that. But yet you're sitting and you're waiting for God to open doors for you. You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. You're the God of breakthrough. Okay, go ahead, show him. Where's the finances? Give to him. Build his house. Some of you, you want God to open doors for you, but you won't even serve in the church. You're too big to do anything in the house of God. You can't sweep a floor. You can't usher anyone in the church. You can't do anything. But you're so demanding on what God should give to you. The truth people don't like to hear. Yes. Yes, I love the truth. I shame the devil. Jamaica says, speak the truth and shame the devil. Yes. What is it you're not what is it that you're not doing that is causing you to miss out on what God has for you? Because God wants to position you in a place where the cloud of glory is over you. When you walk, when you open your mouth, all that people can hear is just blessing. When they look at you, they say, Woman of God, every time I look at you, there's such a presence of God upon you. There's a cloud of glory upon you. You open your mouth and the moment I see you on Facebook Live, on Zoom, on Instagram Live, wherever you are, I automatically feel the presence of God. Even when you open your mouth, I just feel His glory. I see God upon you. I know for a fact He is with you. Some of you, you, you want so bad to walk with God, but you don't want Him to walk with you. Ooh. Yes. Can I be honest with you? Can I share with you a spiritual truth? Don't how much have you asked God to use you? How much have you asked God to use you? Stop doing it. I'll explain why. Don't say father use me. Say father walk with me. Abide in me. Do you know why you don't ask God to use you? Because he could fire you but still use you. Saul, he fired him but he used him. I understand the intention of your heart. You mean well. Father, use me. I understand. But so many times we lack understanding and we speak foolishly. So the truth of the matter is we are speaking but we are speaking without wisdom. You mean well. Your heart is pure. You mean well. But in the spirit it's out of order. Don't ask him. Father use me. Let me see all those of you who say give me more of you Lord. Give me more of you. It's okay. It's okay. Listen it's okay. This is how you learn. I'm teaching you. Don't ever say that. He has already given him, given you all of him. What you ask for, Father, increase my capacity. That, that whatsoever 
you have already given to me. Increase my capacity to hold more. You want to be prosperous, you want to be financially blessed, you're going to feel what it's like to be broke. Because the reason being is, the more that you experience stuff like that, you will, you will experience one thing. The more appreciation it for, 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 for God's best. Don't say you're humble. Because the truth of the matter is, you're not humble when you don't have anything. You're humble when you have everything. It's easy for anybody to look at you and say, oh, you know, I, I'm a humble person. Are you really? Humble person don't go around telling people they're humble. That's one. You're humble only when you have everything. That's when you're humble. You never had a car. You used to walk and take the bus. Now you have a car. Are you picking people up? You see a brother or a sister walking on the street. Do you ask her, can I give you a ride? Or do you drive past them? You never had a home. You didn't have that. Somebody opened the door for you. But somebody else is in need. Are you opening your door? Or have you forgotten where you came from? Because God can put you back there. You never had shoes and clothes and so much that you can pick, choose and refuse from. You were able to look and you have so much shoes. My wife tell me all the time, babe, you have so much shoes. I say, you know, when I was young, I couldn't afford it. Did I had two pairs of shoes. One for school and church. One sneakers that I wore and that sneakers, I kicked the chicken out of it. Yes, God, we used to love ball. Still to this day. Two pairs of shoes. Now my wife will look at me and say, baby, I have so much pair of shoes. And I look at it and I was like, Lord, you're good. It brings tears to my eyes talking about it. It's an emotional thing for me. To some of you, you probably don't understand. I don't, I don't care that you don't understand. I know what I'm saying because I know where I came from. And if you, I, me, I don't try to show people anything about this and that and what I have. I always talk to you about what I never had. I look at it and I said, God, you are indeed good. And I, I'm reminded, I took my family back home and I showed them how I used to walk on the road to church. Where's Sammy? He's in the bathroom. I remember there were, there, there were times I would walk and the same shoes that I'm using to walk to church in is the same shoes I used to go to school. And one thing in Jamaica, I was showing my, you remember when I showed you the, the, the polish that was used to be used to polish the shoes? The, 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 oh, you remember in the round thing? Yeah. Okay. Now, I used to brush my shoes with brown, but it was black because I wanted a certain neutral shade so I could be able to wear to school and to church. See, only if you're like us, they, they don't know. These privileged kids. Privileged kids. One thing I'll, I will never lie is that I never tell you that I remember walking barefoot to school. That never happened. God has been too good. We weren't that bad. But one thing I remember, my mother worked so hard to be able to have what she gave to us. So today I look at shoes and I'm looking and I'm like, hey, Jesus. I look in the closet, there's uh, so much clothes, woman of God, by God's grace. To the point that I just love giving. Listen, I can't, listen, I'm the kind of person that will take off anything I have now and give it. I don't hold on to anything. You can have the car, go and have it. Just make sure you have the money to maintain it. That one I'm not giving you. where we have them. Before we never had it. Little things, small. You walk in a closet, I open it, you're seeing clothes. I'm looking like, hallelujah. 
go to a different closet, I see a whole rack of suits. I say, glory to God. But before, it was not so. Those things, and I know the Lord watches these things and sees even how I give it. I don't hold on to it. The same way it came into my life by the giver of gifts is the same way more will come to me. to remember that he does, he's not doing it to make you feel bad or make you feel low in spirit that's not what he's doing is what I'm saying making sense are you sure so right now I want you to lift your hands to heaven I want you to pray and talk to your father father I realize the shift that is about to come into my life and I cannot afford to miss out on what you have for me. Tell him what you struggle with and what you need help with. And as you tell him, tell him, Father, I just need you help because I realize I can't do this on my own. This has been a habit. This has been something that has been happening in my life. If you don't want anybody to know, go walk to the side or something. Go talk to your father. I'm serious. Go, take time now. Go to the side. Go somewhere. Talk to him. Just tell him what you're struggling with. Father, help me. Every time I keep going on the same mountain, I mess myself up at times. Father, I realize I don't have the, 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 the discipline. I lack the discipline. Father, give me grace. Give me your grace. Give me grace. Father, give me grace. I need your grace. I need your grace, Father. My total dependency is in you and you alone. I realize that you are about to move people out of my life. Father, let your will be done. It will hurt, but Father, I trust you. I realize where you're taking me. Many people will not be able to go with me. But I stand here knowing for a fact that you are with me. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. You're moving things around. You're shifting things around. What you're about to do is greater than you think. It's greater than what I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I'm serious. speak to your father. Take this moment to just say, it's you and him. It's you and me. I have a bad habit. I love my friends. I love my family. I love them so much. And I'm seeing things happening and I want to help them. But I realize that this is your will. Help me to understand that. Help me to not be a people pleaser because I, I guess because I struggle with rejection. I struggle with anger. I struggle with being alone. I struggle with that. Father, you know where I'm coming from. Help me. Help me. Help me. I realize what has been happening in, the, in my bloodline. There's so many things that's been happening with my bloodline. And I've realized that I have literally made that thing a place for me to dwell. Father, help me by your grace. Help me, please help me, help me, help me, Jesus. Give me grace. Remove it from me. I don't want to be a victim of the devil. But I am victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you, you have, been, you have gone through so much. The enemy has even been attacking you. You have gone through rejection. Even like myself that has gone through it. This is why you hurt people without realizing it. Ask him to help you. Father, remove a spirit of rejection from me. Anger comes from that place. I struggled with it. Lately these days, the Lord has been showing me so much about me and continuously and what I need to work on. Now I just get quiet and I step away from things. 
because I don't want to ever put myself in a place where something happens. I keep my mouth shut and I keep it moving. Ask him, Father, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Give me your grace. Give me your grace. Give me your grace. Give me grace. Give me grace, Lord. Give me grace, Lord. Speak to him. Speak to him. Father, from today, in the mighty name of Jesus, by your grace, I will not be the same. Certain attitudes and behaviors that I myself struggle with, Lord. Father, today is the day. It has come to an end in Jesus' name. something happens and sometimes you don't know that you have not gotten over something until something happens 
So when something happens, you know when you do the same thing again, you know uh, you didn't, uh, nothing changed. But I realized that I was facing a certain thing, a, a certain situation. And I told myself, I'm going to act right. I'm going to think right. I'm going to do better. And I just went into prayer. And this is something I've been living. And I asked, I prayed, I talked to the Lord. The Lord showed me something. The Lord said, you have to remember who you are and what you're carrying. And remember that where you're going, where your wife is going, where your family is going, the enemy doesn't like it. But because you know what I have given to you, to protect it means to pray. To protect it means to spend time in my presence. To protect it means to obey and do what I have commanded you to do. Some of you, you want God to do so much for you, but you don't want to do anything he has told you to do. And the truth of the matter is you will never be able to walk in the fullness of God until you're at a place where you say to yourself, Father, or even say, say to the Lord, Father, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. My, in, in, in my weakness, you are made strong. I realize that even though I struggle with this thing, you, have, you are the one that has given me grace to be able to stand. Is what I'm saying making any sense? Are you sure? Some of you, the Lord wants you to stay away from certain things that gets you to do certain things. Are you hearing me? Yes. There are certain things that you have to just stay away from. Let it go from your life. When you let it go, you're going to begin to see a change in your life. Let it go. When, my, when I found out that I was adopted, I was so angry. And I felt so alone and rejected because I thought in myself, why did she give me up? Why did you do that? Why, 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 why would you do that? It's, I'm your child. And I'm sitting there and I, I remember fighting to the point that in, in, my new, in my adopted family, I would try to prove myself and try to be seen and try to, all these other things. Man, it was tiring. And I had no idea that it was causing problems. And it would, I'll just say that, would cause problems. Let me explain something to you. There are certain things in your life if you're not careful of, you don't look at it right now, but when you get older, it will affect you. That's why when it comes to my kids, I, uh, because I don't want my kids to ever feel something that I felt. But even my, even the fear of feeling that way can cause my kids to feel the way that I don't want them to feel. Because fear can cause that. And God was speaking to me last night. I'm showing me some things. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying the Holy Ghost. And I realize patterns. Some of you in here, you have to understand their patterns that you keep on having in your life and there's no change that will come and you're going to continue in that same pattern and nothing is going to change until you decide to change it some of you, you, you are comfortable with where you're at why? you make excuses and you think that it's, it, it's a good excuse there's no excuse that you could have that could possibly cause you to think that what you're doing is correct are you hearing me? Are we sure? Are we sure? <laughs> I'm serious. Some things arise in your life because God wants to show you that that is something you need to work on. It arising in your life because God is like, listen, you need to fix this. If you don't fix this, nothing will change. So today, I, I, even as you carry on your day, enjoy, have a good time today, man. But please, 
Don't move on with your life doing the same things that you always do. Love covers a multitude of sin. Where there's love, there's forgiveness. There's no hatred. There's no resentment. There's no bitterness. I realized I had to forgive myself because I was harming myself. So I forgave myself. But you know the funny thing about it is people in church today are hurting and nobody wants to say anything because they, they don't want people in their business because it will be used against you. Well, hey, listen. I just told you my business. And it's good. Because at least somebody else may be touched by it. Convicted by the Holy Spirit concerning it. Yes, it's no problem. Some people didn't think that I said too much. No problem. It's fine. I said just what the Lord... Listen. Sometimes you have to understand there are certain things that you go through in life and God lets you go through it because of a testimony that you will have. You have to stop thinking about you. Sometimes the pain that you've been feeling for over how many years is for such a time as this to minister to somebody. What do you say about to women that has been raped and molested from they were children by their own family members? But then they're preaching the word today and lifting the name of Jesus. And they're okay to testify of the goodness of God by bringing what they went through up. Some of you would have said, I'm not doing that. While some is saying, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will do it. Because you're so selfish, you keep thinking that your pain, uh, that pain you're feeling, not your pain, but the pain you're feeling, you're thinking that God purposely wanted you to go through that so you can, be, you can die. No, that's not true. That's a lie from the pit of hell. What you have gone through is for somebody else to be blessed by it. Whatever it is you went through, your testimony is somebody else's blessing. It's somebody else's breakthrough. You talking about it, I guarantee you, somebody going to be feeling. I can point at some people right now that, is, that has been going through, battling with certain things and going through certain things. I can call them out. Some, what I just said, it ministered to someone. Yes. Be honest with yourselves. Just as I was honest with me. Be honest with yourself. There's a lot of things I don't like about me. Yes. Did you? Yes. Let me see all those who love everything about themselves. Even your nasty, dirty, stinking ways. You love it, eh? Some of you, you lie to yourself. Stop doing that. You make excuses for your actions. You're wrong. Change. That's why I tell myself, I don't like getting myself in certain situations. And when I see it, I, I walk away from it. Because I don't want to do something that is going to make me affected. So I walk away from it. Some of you walk away from certain things. Stop running to it. Be wise in what you do. I remember years ago, uh, I think a few years ago, my wife used to, because my temper, I used to have a very bad, bad, bad temper. And my wife used to tell me, instead of you uh, lashing out, <laughs> Sorry. the way that you're lashing out, take a walk. Go somewhere. I'm here for you, but sometimes you just probably don't want to see me or hear me. So you just walk and take a break, babe. She's not wrong, because you know she's a psychi psychology major. So she, she, I, get, I, have, I have a wife as the prophetess and then the wife as the doctor. And there's nothing wrong with the fact that sometimes she has to give me the doctor, because sometimes I need the doctor. Sometimes I need to hear the psychology side of things. And then sometimes I don't need to hear the psychology side of things. Is what I'm making is is what I'm saying making sense? Uh, Jesse, I want you to talk to prophetess. I walked by and I saw something. 
I want you to talk to a prophetess and I want you to start doing uh, uh, counseling with her. Okay? Okay. Because if not, I saw a spirit coming over you, causing you to take your own life without realizing it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Is what I'm saying making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, prophetess, for those who don't know, prophetess it has her PhD in psychology, meaning that she will help anyone that needs to talk. And one thing she was teaching me to, and I didn't know this, but she was telling me that uh, uh, when it comes to, I believe you can't, I think, what did she say it again? She said, uh, there's like a, a thing where the hippo law, right, where she, w she can't say anything, to, not even to me, she can't say anything to me. Well, she don't need to say anything to me because God already revealed it to me. That's why I'm sending you to her. So even in the spirit, I know the hippo law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Spiritual hippo law. <laughs> but I'm serious. You guys are blessed. You're blessed. Talk to prophetess. And don't go to her as mom. Forgive me for saying this, but some of you, you get so familiar with us. You don't even know where to turn it off. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'm serious. It's not always mommy and daddy. Sometimes it's just prophetess, prophet, or Dr. Manish Bennett. You know what I'm saying? In other words, the doctor. You need, sometimes you just, so therapy is needed, is what I'm saying. It's needed. I'm learning that, you know. It's needed. So, I want you to make sure you talk to, talk to mom. Whenever you get the chance, I want you to talk with her. And you guys come up with times and days that you can have where you're there to, you, you can sit and speak to her. You know what I'm saying? Not her as mom, but her as, as your, your therapist that is there to be a blessing to you. Amen. And trust me, that's between you, her, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But it's needed because I didn't like what I saw. Uh, the devil won't win on, with you. Amen. You will win and triumph over him. Amen. Amen. Prophesy. All you need, we don't need to lay hands on you and pray for you for what I saw. You just need somebody to talk to. Not somebody that is a total stranger that you can't understand. Somebody that you are familiar with and you know and that is straightforward and will tell you about yourself. You know, can I be honest with you? You know, sometimes yeah. some of you just need somebody to tell you about yourself. Yeah. That's all you need, you know. Honestly, yeah. you, know, you know why sometimes you won't see me waste my time laying hands on certain people? Because all they just need somebody to look at and say, listen, my guy, you're full of baloney. You always do that. Change it. <laughs> I'm serious. You just have to do that. My brother and I, our relationship is crazy. He'll call me and talk to me. We'll talk to each other and he'll tell me, bro, you know, bang, bang, boom, boom, boom. I look at him and I was like, are you serious, bro? I'm sorry. I, didn't re I remember one time <laughs> I was talking to him last night and I said to him, uh, <laughs> serious story, I kid you not. I said to him, I said, you know I love you, bro. You're so patient with me. You know, the other day he's trying to explain something to me. He had to use banana chips. I couldn't understand. No, I'm serious. I, where's Sammy? I was trying to understand what he was trying to say because what he was telling was not what I wanted to hear. I was getting upset. No, I'm serious. I got so upset. I looked at my son. I, I think Caleb was there. And I think who else was there? Malik was there. I was sitting there and I was saying, I said, I don't think Uncle Chris is understand what I'm saying. Can you just take the phone and talk to him? They try talking to me. <laughs> They're talking to him. And I'm on the phone like, he's still not understanding what I'm trying to say. So he used his banana chips, something I like. He said, bro, you know banana chips, right? I said, no cap, do I? Of course, bro, we grew up on that. He said, okay. So let's say you have banana chips and bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, 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 boom, boom. I said, oh, bro, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. Why didn't you just use banana chips? You could have just used that. Why you got to use this? Can I be honest? You know what I'm trying to tell you? 
Stop trying to think everybody will understand based off of your understanding. Give them the benefit of the doubt. See where they are mentally that will cause them to have an understanding. Then move from there. See, I'm trying to be, have a heart to heart, you know. Some people don't like this, you know. Some of you, that's why some people think that you guys, some of you, you're so harsh or you're so disrespectful or something. You guys, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's, it's okay or it's not okay for you to vent. But I always, one thing I live by and I've realized because I, I, I remembered, it, ha- it happened to me so, ma- so many times through my years growing up. I realize how hurtful it is. But I always say, you can say whatever you want to say, but it depends on how you say it. I don't care what you say. I'm wrong. I understand that. But if you lash out on me, you're going to have a fight. Because I don't back down for nothing. So let's be understanding and just be real with each other. And be wise and say, you know, mama, I'm so sorry for my daughter. I'm sorry. What you, what you had said was absolutely true. But at the time, I was just so heated. No, I'm serious. Sometimes you answer based off of how heated you were. You just have to calm down. Breathe. (sighs) Okay, cool. Bro, my guy, listen. (laughs) I'm serious. Be wise. It's never what you say, but how you say it. One of the things that I've realized is if you're not careful, you hurt people that love you. And you don't mean it. And I'm going to be honest. Sometimes you don't mean to hurt them, but it happens. And the reason why it happens is because of your zeal of lack of understanding. And your zeal of doing what you want to do. Trust me. Some people, even to this day, they do so many things, say some things to me. I want to give them a piece of my mind. But I realize that I, I shouldn't do that. Because I also want to see from where they are coming from. Because some people, they love you so much, they're passionate with their delivery. That they don't mean to come across mean. But they're so passionate about you, that you not listening grieves them. And so especially if I know I've done something wrong, and they're lashing out on me because of what I did, I always stop myself. That takes maturity now. Not everybody in here is that mature to understand that. Some of you, you still lie to yourself and you're some how much a year old. I can call some of you all out. The camera's still on? Oh, God bless you all. Have a good night. Turn it off.